as far back as like Taft. Taft was a president. He was obese. Um, and, you know, they I think there were journalists uh, that depicted cartoons of him being like this fat guy who got stuck in a bathtub. I remember <laughs> seeing that in a history book when I was a kid, like in high school history. I remember this image and it must have mm. been and Taft would have been early 1900s, I think. I think early 1900s. Um, so it's not as though the media has. Yeah completely changed and and you know you hit upon something very important which because i was like saying we need an authority figure we can believe in and all that kind of stuff like but and you were like well be careful there because you know then if you can't make fun of them or satire satirize them there's a danger there and i agree i agree with you there so maybe it's a trade-off i mean but maybe you also don't want a complete buffoon maybe there's some middle ground here where we could you know and that isn't that isn't that almost a sign of legitimate authority mm -hmm. when a person can m allow themselves to be made fun of mm -hmm. without seeming overly sensitive about it? In fact, that is one of the things that if you ever key in on someone, you can usually trust them. If, if they don't get overly upset about being criticized and even made fun of, that's a real good clue to someone that may deserve some some authority it's always and you know the the last two presidents certainly have demonstrated that kind of irritable nature that mm -hmm. comes from from whether or not the criticisms are right or wrong or fair or unfair at the time I, probably for both it has been both you know uh and every time I, any time I ever say for both, it's probably both in this, I hear the chorus of howling <laughs> angry people on both sides just saying, it's mm -hmm. not that, this is what, it's fine. But um, <laughs> I think there's something to that. It's like, you know, and in this movie, well, we, we get to how it's the use of comedy that takes down the authority figure of, of satire yeah. making fun of it, right? But if a good sign is that if the comedy happens towards something and there's no immediate uh, response, over response, or like bring the hammer down upon, you know, you see people that like get arrested for doing like comedy memes and stuff in Britain, not so much America, I don't yeah. think. But there have been some things like that that have even happened, you know, where it becomes, and some of it might be distasteful or whatever, but I mean, like you have seen that. We have all seen that in the last. Mm -hmm. five years or so of like intolerance towards comedy that's you know pokes fun at any group when really comedy isn't about telling knock knock jokes if you're going to see the political usage of comedy in any society it's as a barometer for what's becoming off limits and what becomes off limits is at times it shows that there's a kind of insecurity in the authority and i don't mean that the authority is weak per se but that it's if it's intolerant of being able to be mocked in that harmless sense it's comedy it's not a gun it's not actual violence like that's that's another that goes into another discussion of this idea that jokes cause harm well you know they are pretty low on the list of things that cause deaths every year. So perhaps we can get to, I don't know, heart disease and accidental deaths first. Then we'll go down the list till we get to deaths from comedy. But when you see a group or a figure that cannot tolerate being mocked, it, it has this um, way of letting you know that that's not a stable power. There's something in, unstable in that group or figure. Because think about the ruler that executes the jester, like a tyrannical ruler that doesn't allow any kind of uh, mockery of them in, in, in political cartoons or, or, or just general jokes. You can't mock the ruler. I mean, these are despots. That's what that is. So, I mean... Even historically, societies have had a role for the sacred clown, the jester, the one figure that's allowed to mock power. And there's something 
useful in that it's it's a kind of barometer for whether something is taking itself too seriously or whether something is becoming so inflexible then that criticism is a threat and when criticism and mockery becomes a threat to something you have to wonder what that thing is hiding what is what is the motives of that thing that requires it extinguish criticism and mockery because any healthy system any tolerant leadership can withstand mockery and criticism 